Well, hey there. Today I'm going to show you how to make this DIY leather photo album keychain with your Cricut machine. Let's go ahead and get started. So let's first review our supplies before we do the setup in Cricut Design Space. So like I said, we're going to be making this really cute little leather photo album holder here that can be used as a keychain or something that you adorn onto a purse or a backpack. And the supplies you're going to need for this is going to be some sort of faux leather or glitter canvas. Um, they're, they're known as both often in the craft world, so you can find like these faux leather designs or a thin glitter canvas that can also work if you want to go with that approach. I am going to be using a Cricut machine to cut this leather out with and the glitter canvas. You can do both with the Cricut machine. So I'll be using a strong grit mat for that. And I also have some painter's tape on hand to be able to tape the edges down of my material just to make sure nothing ships around on me. A brayer tool can be helpful as well to push the material to the mat and make sure it gets a good grip. I'm going to be using heat transfer vinyl, also known as iron on vinyl for the other side the back side of my faux leather or glitter canvas here. I'm also going to be showing a different approach where you can put two pieces, two cutouts of your very paper thin leather or glitter canvas back to back if you want to not do the part where we're ironing on the heat transfer vinyl as the backing. You will still want to have some heat transfer vinyl regardless if you would like to add a message to the back side of your keychain or to the bottom inside of your keychain holder here. In order to get the pictures onto our uh, photo leather keychain holder here, you're also gonna wanna have some uh, DIY transfer paper for dark fabric, which we're gonna be printing off on our printer and having our Cricut machine cut out for us. And I'm gonna show you how to set that up in Cricut Design Space so you can use your own photos in just a few moments. For the actual part where you can connect your keychain to your key ring or your backpack or your purse, you're gonna to wanna to have a key ring and then a little clip as well in order to get that on there and make it nice and easy. You will also need to have some metal snaps in whichever color you would like. So I purchased this kit off of Amazon. I'm gonna link all of my resources for everything below so that you can follow along if you want to know the names of everything that I'm purchasing here. I also am going to be using a leather puncher here, so it just punches holes through my leather or my faux glitter canvas, and it's very easy and effortless to get that nice little round hole. And if the white edging of your faux leather bothers you at all, you may want to have some sort of metallic marker or sharpie on hand, and we can just coat the ends of that and it will make it look more seamless. Lastly, because we're going to be using the iron on heat transfer vinyl, you'll want a heat safe surface like an easy press pad, and then you'll need an easy press or some sort of heat press. You could also use an easy press mini if you do not want to use the full press as well, and any of that will suffice in order to get the iron on vinyl onto our little keychain holder here. So let's go ahead and set this project up in Design Space, and these templates are going to be available linked below for you for all of our premium members on Abby Kirsten Collections, and you can learn more about how to become a premium member and get access to all of my projects below in the video description. So go ahead and check that out and then let's go ahead and get started and set this up in Cricut Design Space. So the first thing you need to do is download this template from members.abbykirstencollections.com. This is one of our premium member designs, but if you are not a premium member, don't worry. You can just hop on board. It's only $9 a month right now, so um, it's very affordable and you get access to hundreds of templates and designs. So let's go over to our upload button here, which is where we're going to need to bring in the file. So after you've downloaded the file and you can find it linked below for you, you're going to click the upload button here and then you'll click upload image and you're going to want to browse your computer to the location where you saved the file. So here is my file right here and I'm going to click open. Okay. So there is the image and we're just going to click upload at the bottom there. You'll want to select it under recent uploads and then click add to canvas. And there we go. Now we've brought our template in here and it's already set to a pretty good scale. You can scale it a little if you want to. I don't recommend going smaller than nine inches in, um, in width for this actual template because it's going to make things a little difficult, but it's set to a pretty good size as it is. So let's talk about now how to get our images, our photos in these spaces here. I'm going to go ahead and just get this one off my canvas so it's out of the way. And then I'm going to bring this one over here. I'm going to go ahead and ungroup it. <clears throat> 
and bring this down here. Okay, so each one of these four gray squares here represents where you're gonna be able to insert a photo, which we're going to be using on our leather keychain photo holder. So how do we do that? First thing you need to do is select each of these gray squares and go up to operation where it says basic cut and change it to print and cut. You'll wanna do that with all four of them. So I'm gonna select the rest of these and I'm just holding my shift key and clicking here in order to select multiple at a time and changing to print and cut. <clears throat> All right, the next step is to insert our pattern fill. So where do we find pattern fills? We're gonna go up to the color swatch that's next to the operation. And where it says color, change it to pattern. Now, if you've never done any pattern uploads before, you're just gonna see Cricut Design Space pattern fills here. But this is also where you can add your own patterns and where you're going to find them after we upload them. So you can see all of my photos that I've uploaded here. So how do we actually upload a pattern for it to appear here? You're going to need to go back to the upload button and this time click on pattern fill at the top and click upload pattern. Browse your computer and find the image you want to bring in. So I'm going to bring in, I'll just pick this one here and you'll click upload the bottom corner. And it's gonna give you a success message, pattern upload successful, but you're not gonna see it here in recent uploads. You're gonna find it back where we were a minute ago in that pattern fill drop down. So I'm again gonna select one of these squares, click the color swatch, click on pattern, <clears throat> and then here is the photo we just uploaded. So I'm gonna click on that as an example, and it's going to insert it onto that shape. Now what happens if you end up getting what's called like a tiling clone here where it's repeating the image, but we want it to look seamless. You're gonna to need to click on the edit pattern. I'm actually gonna pick a different photo to show you a little bit better. Let's do this one. Okay, so see how that's repeating and it's not centered? Click on edit pattern and you'll be able to scale and nudge these to the left, the right, or up or down. So I'm gonna bring this in and scale it up. You can use the slider or you can type in exact values or use the arrow up and down keys. The horizontal here, if you go into negative values, it'll shift it one way or the other. Right now it needs shifting to the left quite a bit. You could also type in values just to be able to make the process a little bit faster go and then vertical it needs to come down quite a bit so again there we go it's not bad and I'll just zoom this in a little bit more all right there we go now it's nice and centered once we've set those values you can just close this out and it will reflect here on your canvas and you're going to repeat that with each of these squares Okay, so the next thing would be to decide if you wanna add a message or something here on this side, and then if you wanna give it like a label like mom, dad, or something on the exterior that we could do. All you're gonna do here is just use your text tool to type it out. And you could use a Cricut font or download your own. The font I'm using here is called Tangerine, um, and it was a system font that I downloaded. So you would just select the text tool here. Move this here. Select your text tool, and then type out whatever message you wanna write. Maybe you wanna say, you know, like, Happy Father's Day or Happy Mother's Day or something else. And you'll just want to type that out. I'm going to center the alignment of those there, although it's probably not going to matter much because we're going to add them on kind of separately anyways. And I'll show you what I mean in a few minutes. All right, so just type out whatever message you want there and you're pretty much good to go on that if you want to add the message. The next step is going to be to go ahead and go to the cut screen here and set up our material settings. So I'm using the Maker 3, but you can use the Explore, the Explore 2, Explore 3, Original Maker, any of those are going to work fine. So the first option here is we're going to do the print and cut, and all we need to do is click continue. You'll hit send to printer, and then you'll want to select your printer from the drop down menu. If you need to set a higher quality to your printing, you're going to want to toggle on the system dialog. So you would just hit the print button. And then once you do, it's going to give you that system dialog box. I'm going to put it to best and then we'll click print. Once you've printed this, 
you're gonna need to select your material to cut it out with. So I'm gonna be just doing a medium cardstock for this because I want it to cut all the way through. Um, so I'll just select a medium cardstock when we load this onto our machine. For the other settings here, so for this design and for the frame piece, you're going to want, for this piece here, you're going to want this to be a faux leather or a glitter canvas. So if you're doing a faux leather, just browse your materials, type in leather, and then you have some different options here. I have found that the metallic leather setting works well for most faux leathers in general. Now, if you're working with genuine letters or something else, you may wanna consider some of these, like the paper thin one, you may wanna consider some of these other options. Now, there's two options for you here. This here with the frame piece, you can either cut this out in an iron-on heat transfer vinyl, or you can cut the frame piece out in another paper thin faux leather. So I will show you both in assembly in the video tutorial, but just make that decision based on what you want. If you're using iron on vinyl, make sure you mirror. So you need to click on the edit and we need to mirror it so that once we actually place it down, it's gonna be facing the correct direction. So don't forget to mirror. And then select your material accordingly. So if you're using everyday iron on or glitter iron on, go ahead and select those or browse them here to find them. All right, let's go ahead and make this project. All right, so to get started here, we're going to load our material onto our mat. Again, I'm using, in this example, a Cricut brand paper thin faux leather. I have also used a thicker one as well. You need to adjust your settings accordingly. You could also use some sort of metallic or glitter canvas as well for this project. So it can work with a variety of materials, so don't be afraid to play around with it. I'm going to press this down to my mat, and I'm just going to use my brayer to roll this on make sure it's good and pressed and then we're going to take some of our blue painters tape here and tape down the edges just to make sure things stay in place all right so i'm going to go ahead and load this and we're going to cut this design out And you would just do this with all of your layers like we went over in design space so this is one of my faux leather layers but if you're doing the faux leather in the frame piece or in the iron on vinyl of course you're going to cut those materials out as well and get those all ready to go and prepped okay and so here is my print and cut for the images i'm just placing this on my mat i'm rolling it on with the brayer tool and we're going to go ahead and have our Cricut cut these out. You could also cut these with a pair of scissors because it's very simple, but I like the precision that the Cricut's going to give me to make sure that everything's nice and straight and I'm not going to have any overhang uh, in my design. All right, so I'm going to show you two ways like I mentioned. I'm going to show you one with pictures added between two paper thin faux leather pieces. So this is actually both of these sides are the faux leather. So as long as it's a super thin option, then that will work for you. If you don't want to go this route or you're using a thicker glitter canvas or a thicker leather, then you may want to opt for using iron-on vinyl as the backside of your material here, your glitter canvas or your faux leather. So I'm going to do both just so you guys can see the example of both and see how both work. They're essentially going to come together exactly the same way, except we're going to be using a little bit of fabric glue for this and we're using heat here with our iron on to bring them together. So let's start with this one because we got to have a little dry time on our fabric glue and I'm going to first take this off there and we need to get our pictures put on first. So you can use your Easy Press Mini set at a medium setting, or you could use a full Easy Press set at 270 for 25 seconds. Either is gonna work, and I'm gonna flip back and forth between the two here just so you can see that they both will work. I have my pictures cut out like we already went over, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick the ones I want and place them. Now pay attention to where you're placing because you will notice that the images are actually slightly different sizes. The ones on the end are more narrow and the one in the middle is larger. So just pay attention to that when you're putting this together. Now, it is super, super important that before you iron anything on, you are checking that you are putting things in the right location. So for example, if I was going to put this down right now, I would have accidentally put it on the side we're not gonna see. So you need to make sure your pictures are on the correct side 
and that you're going to be able to see them through the little framed pieces. So just make sure you're placing things in the right direction. It's very important. I messed up three of these before I got it right because there was those little steps you got to be careful of. So once you're ready to put this down, go ahead and just peel off the image. It's a very thin layer, just like that. All right, so once I get those placed in the locations that I want, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover this in some of the butcher paper that comes with our heat transfer material here, our iron-on material that we printed our pictures onto. Go ahead and start pressing these on. So I'm gonna use my Easy Press Mini for this example. The Easy Press Mini, you can just work it back and forth in small areas to press this on. And then move on to the next area. So once you think it's done, just go ahead and take it off. Check that everything is wanting to stick. You might wanna let your leather cool just for a moment or two. All right, so I'm going to be doing this one. I'm going to repeat the same process with the pictures exactly the same way. I've taken the backs off of these parts, are these ones already, and I'm getting them placed here. Let me take the back off of this one. Now, if you're using iron-on vinyl, which is this is the one we're going to be using the iron-on vinyl on, you want to make sure that your liner is not so sticky that it's going to actually peel the fresh ink up from your images. So that happened on one of mine. And it was a learning lesson. So if you're using the glitter iron-on like I happen to be using, the liner is extra sticky. So you're going to want to take precaution with that. We're going to start first with getting these pictures down, but then I'll show you the tip that will allow you to use the iron-on vinyl and not ruin the images that are on here. So I'm going to get my butcher paper here and place this down again. Also, once again, checking, are we getting things on the right side the pictures are showing on the right sides and they are so I'm gonna go ahead and iron these on as well so now this one is done as well so like I said this piece here is the faux leather we're gonna use it on both sides we're gonna do glue on that in just a second and then since I already have my heat press going we're also gonna place this now like I said stickiness could result in some of the ink coming off of your pictures. So what do we do? We use the little backs that we just took off of these, make sure you save them, and place them right in there to make sure that the sticky area is protected. And you might have to figure out which one fits where. There we go on that one. And now we're gonna flip this over. We know our photos are protected. Take a moment to just line it up all right, that looks pretty good to me. So we can, again, use our Easy Press Mini here just to press over this. Or if you want, you could use the full press as well, um, which would be easier for this particular step because it would be good to just press it all at once. So since I have my full press here, I'm just going to opt for that. So if you opt for the full press, I recommend around 270 for 25 seconds. That's gonna be the best option to where you're not scorching your photos, but you're still able to get that iron on vinyl onto your surface. So that's what I'm using here. So we can use our full press just as much as we could use the Easy Press Mini for this part. So it's best to do a cool peel with this. What that means is you want the material to cool down before you lift the liner. So I'm going to just let this sit for a couple of minutes so that it's not super hot. And we're gonna go ahead and add our glue for this example. So if you want to avoid doing the iron-on frame, you can do it with glue. And I'm gonna be using this tack over glue here. And all you wanna do is just go around the edges and put a little bit of the tack glue. Just enough to where you know it will grab. And if working on the frame is too hard, you can always go actually on this piece here if you find that easier. I actually do find this easier, so I'm gonna do the frame piece here. All right, so for this part, we're gonna go ahead and place this down. I like to start at the bottom here and then kind of let these little frame pieces just fall into place like that like i said this glue does dry clear so don't 
worry if you get a little bit somewhere it's not supposed to go. I'm getting it places it shouldn't go. And when I did a test on this, it still looked just fine. You couldn't see it because it was clear when it dried. So for this one that's drying, I highly recommend setting it aside for at least 10 or 15 minutes to let the glue set up before you move on to the next step. For this one, we can go ahead and continue while this one is drying. So you can see two different approaches here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually peel this off. There we go. I'm gonna take these little pieces off and we can see that our pictures were protected from having anything, you know, pull off the ink or anything like that when we use those little um, swatches that were left over from the backs of our images. Okay, so as far as ease, which one's easier when you're assembling? I personally feel that the iron-on is easier because you don't have to worry about, you know, getting glue and then pushing it down, waiting for it to dry, all of that fun stuff that sometimes is not fun stuff. So if you're wanting ease of use, then I recommend going the iron-on vinyl route. Okay, so the next step is going to be to punch our holes. And we wanna punch our holes first before we add on our little message. So remember, we talked about the messages we're gonna add here and on the exterior. We wanna punch the holes first so that we can make sure we're working within the parameters of where these holes are falling. So what we're gonna do first is I'm gonna take this and I like to reverse it so it's like this. And when we do that, you just wanna bend it to where, it's just a little bit of a loop. There's not an exact science to this part here, so just bend it so it's a little bit of a loop. Don't, don't pull it super far down. You want it to have some space here. So don't pull it super far down. So let's just pull it down to about there, just right a little bit underneath the tip. And I'm gonna take this leather puncher, I'm actually gonna flip this over because I'm gonna see. So there's some negative space here in my picture which is going to work really well for where this is going to punch in. So keep that in mind when you're placing your pictures that you may wanna have some negative space in that area wherever you place that one picture. So grabbing this leather tool, kind of just get the placement lined up there and check that it's fairly centered and give it a punch. Okay, I need to work out the little center there. All right, there we go. So that's one punch done. You wanna make sure with this next punch that whichever one is going to be where the pretty side of the snap goes, you wanna make sure that that's where the picture side is. So obviously this can be open from any direction and viewed however you want, um, but you just wanna make sure that when we close this, we're gonna have the snap here and then we're gonna have the pretty snap right there. So make sure the pretty snap side that you see out here is going at the base of your one picture, okay? Not on the blank side, because then it's gonna mess up and you're gonna end up punching through the picture instead. So I'm gonna pull this down. All right, that looks pretty good. Double checking that I'm punching in the right area. And then we wanna take our tool bring it in I just usually eyeball it and I give it a punch okay so our hole ended up right there on that one and then on this side here now this is the side where your message is gonna go so if you have a message now that we see where the holes are let's place our message on so I'm actually gonna place these words on individually to get this to work for my project the way I need it to. So I'm gonna put the word enjoy up there and then actually I can do fit the word enjoy and every up at the top. So I'm gonna put every, or enjoy first and I'm gonna press that on, press that. Usually for this, I just do about 15 seconds of pressing and then you wanna let it cool peel. So this is the iron on one here and then we'll also add our design to one where we did back to back. Okay, so I'm gonna let that side cool and then I also wanna do the center here. And if you're having trouble picturing the center, you may wanna fold the sides down a little so you can get an idea. So mine's gonna go right about like that for the word mom. Checking to see that this has cooled and peeling back that liner, so it says mom on the outside. 
Okay, so just like we did with this one, let's go ahead and punch our holes. We'll add our iron on, and then the last step will be to add our snaps in. So once again, it's a good idea to visualize. So I'm just gonna fold this side in, this side in. You want the blank side going up, and then finally this one being the downside. So that's covering all of it. So then we're going to just visualize where we need that hole to go, which is gonna be right about there. And I'm gonna put this punch through making sure I'm getting it aligned I'm giving it a punch and then same thing with this over here so with this one I like to reverse it so there's some contrast so I'm just gonna reverse this here make sure you're leaving plenty of a loop there and then I'm gonna get my hole punch again. Okay, so now that I know where my holes are at, I'm gonna flip this over and I can kind of see where my fold lines were. So I'm just going to, my word here, and you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I do recommend potentially protecting your leather surface. So if you don't have a lot of liner here, you may wanna put some parchment paper over it just to offer a little bit of protection from the direct um, heat plate that can be wise to do. So it's time to add our snaps to finish off our little photo leather keychain holder here. So we are going to go ahead and add the snaps on. I'm going to link resources for the snaps below and instructions on how to use snaps and everything that you would need to know in that case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab one of my pieces here and this here is going to be going back like so. So I want to make sure that the pretty side of the snap is facing up here. So that's important to note when you're putting this down. So I'm going to start on this side. I got my hole punched. I'm going to put that there. And then we put, I think they call this the female side is what they typically label the, um, the snaps. They have to call them males and females so you know which ones go together. And then you're going to have these little things that come with them that allow you to hammer them in. So this one here has a point and you're just gonna add the point there and then take your mallet and hit it a couple times. And then it will be secure. So we know that the snap's gonna go back that direction just like that. So we need to make sure when we're adding this next piece, this is what they call the nail side, it's the longer one and it sits through like that and then this is called the male side before you hammer in always check that you're creating the proper connection on the right sides and then you'll need the other hammering piece here the um the other metal piece that has a little sort of circle cut out at the bottom of it so you can set that on top give it a couple of good whacks all right so there's that done and this is what's going to allow us to add this on i'm going to thread this on here and then you'll snap it to snap. So now this is ready to go to be able to be hooked on. And then we just got to add our snap here. So I want to make sure that the pretty side is facing up here again. So pretty side facing up. All right, so you can see the pretty mom on the outside there. All right, so there is our finished keychain. So there is one done. Let's go ahead and finish this one as well for dad. So we've got that side here and then this side. So something else I want to call to your attention to avoid if it bothers you at all, you can notice with this particular one here, when it opens from the snap coming up, then all the pictures are facing. With this one, I accidentally did it to where the snap has to open down in order for all of the pictures to be facing the right direction. If at all you think that would bother you, then just be mindful that when you're placing your pictures, 
that the side where the little key hook's gonna go, the key ring hook's gonna go, it needs to be to your right hand side. So just bear that in mind. I'm still gonna keep this because it still works perfectly fine. You just have to open it um, down rather than up and you can still see your beautiful pictures. But that's just a little note I wanna make. So I hope you love this tutorial. Make sure you download the templates which are be linked below in the video description for you. If you like this tutorial and you like these um, photo keychain options here that we're using canvas glitter and fill leather for, then let me know in the comments that you like these. And I have some other designs in mind I might make if I get enough of a response. So make sure you let me know below so that I'll continue to make them and add more to my community. All right. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys later. Bye for now.